Welcome. Tonight we're talking about the art of Ayurvedic face assessment and diagnosis, which is a uh, fascinating field. And I, and I really, as we're talking about how to understand uh, the face and what the face indicates about the whole body, I want you to be thinking about the whole style of Ayurveda, how we can look at a part of the body and see the whole. Uh, that's a really important concept. Every one of the organs in your body does something really important. And when those organs are not functioning the way they should function, um, it's, uh, it's, it's obvious. It should be obvious, right? We should be able to see the effects of that uh, on your hand, in your face, in your hair, in your pulse, uh, in your digestion, um, in, in your mood, in your emotion, everything. So part of our process and the way that we um, learn to see the human body, to see our clients, and even uh, to understand what's going on in our clients is that we look at different parts of the body and we try to uh, uh, confirm what we're seeing. So as a practitioner, when I see a client, I look at the client's face and I try to glean as much information about what's going on underneath the skin, what's going on in their organs and in their body. And then when I take the client's pulse or look at their tongue or look uh, more closely in their eye, um, or listen to their mood, at that time, I am, um, oh, I'm kind of noise there. Let me mute that line again. Um, at that time, then, uh, then I, I, I'm more confident, right? I'm confident in what I'm seeing because I've seen it in several parts of the body. And that's the level that we want to get to. And that, so we're going to talk today about how to see imbalances inside the body just from looking at the face. And that's going to give us that perspective we're looking for. Uh, it can also help you understand your constitution, also the constitution of people in your community. Uh, this is me. Uh, I'm John Immel. I'm the founder and director of Joyful Belly Ayurveda and, um, and our courses. And tonight's talk is really a, a, a snippet. Um, it's not even the full presentation on face, uh, Ayurvedic face diagnosis that our students get in our certification courses. But... Uh, but it's uh, a good chunk of it, and you um, and and hopefully you'll learn a lot um, in tonight's uh, court and tonight's talk. Uh, but our courses are the fundamentals of Ayurvedic medicine and mastering Ayurvedic digestion and nutritious is our nutrition is our two programs. Uh, the digestion course is a one-year program that really goes deep into digestion, and the fundamentals course is a two-year course that goes over all the basic theory of Ayurveda. Um, and how to apply it. Both programs are very challenging programs, very rich programs. Uh, you'll learn a lot in them. Uh, we, uh, we're, as a school, we're really into great academics, uh, but we're also into making uh, complex things simple and easy to understand. And I hope that's what you'll find in tonight's presentation is that Ayurveda is accessible. It's not something with fancy vocabulary that uh, is difficult to understand, but it's something obvious, something that anyone can do. And uh, we aim to take all of that richness of Ayurveda and all the innovations really of all medicine systems from around the world and bundle them in such a way that it's accessible to, uh, to everyone, to people, because that's our goal is to heal people, to help people and to convince uh, the public of Ayurveda's relevance and the need for Ayurveda uh, in um, uh, as a as a public in our in our public health models for our nation. Okay, so facial analysis, uh, visual examination is one of three methods in Ayurvedic assessment, um, and that's along with palpation and questioning. So we're listening to the client, we're touching the client. Uh, you know, maybe we'll. We will palpate the stomach of the client, or take their pulse, uh, or uh, or we will um, uh, palpate the palpate the lungs. Uh, listen, put a stethoscope. Listen to the lungs. That's all part of uh, our examination. So visual examination is one of the first uh, method that we use. We try to uh, see from afar and then get up close. 
And the first thing you notice when you meet someone is their face. And so this, uh, this presentation is relevant uh, to every person. Uh, you know, when you meet people, you'll, you can understand them more deeply when you understand Ayurvedic face analysis. And this really helps you be compassionate. You know, people act in ways that, um, that uh, are different from our own, right? You may, have a, you may meet somebody and you have certain expectations. Those expectations are not being met, uh, perhaps in a certain circumstance. And when you can see and understand what's going on underneath the client's body, how their constitution is affecting their emotions and other things, it really opens the door for compassion. And you start to understand, oh yeah, well that person is different in these, in these ways. And so I can understand how they think that way. I can understand how they approach it from that different angle. Ayurveda gives that wonderful tool for compassion. And I think facial analysis, uh, because it's something that we, you, we, you, do want, you start to do automatically anytime you meet somebody, um, it is um, a great tool for that, uh, a great tool for insight into the client's constitution, tendencies, and imbalances. Great. Um, so we all know this, that a face tells a story. And I just like to think about that, you know, just as a, as a starting point, is that you can almost see a person's soul in their face, right? You know, you can see their, uh, their way of being, uh, their emotions, the kind of person they are, their character, all kinds of things. And, um, and it's, uh, it's exciting to connect that with the physical side of their body. All right, so when you're assessing a person's face, you have to remember that people are trying to alter their looks using makeup, uh, fake eyelashes, or uh, moisturizers. A lot of times I look at a person's face, I'm like, oh, wow, they have a nice sheen to their skin. Uh, their skin is very moisturized. And then, um, I, then I get that little hesitation. I'm like, wait a second, do you use a moisturizer? And they're like, oh, yes, every morning. So then I know, okay, that's not an accurate sign of their constitution. Look at the difference uh, in how eyeshadow and, uh, and um, you know, just how uh, blush and, and other kinds of makeup can uh, change the way a person's face looks. So you have to be on the lookout for that when you are doing face assessment. Uh, other things that you want to look out for when you're assessing a person's face is you wanna understand how temperature affects the skin. Right? If it's a cold day, a person's going to have a pale face. Um, if, we, uh, if we were in a more small group uh, conversation right now, I'd ask, okay, who knows why your face looks pale in the winter? But because there's so many on the call, I'm just going to answer it. Um, when, you're, when it's cold, your body doesn't want to lose heat. And so your capillary beds constrict in the surface of your skin. That brings blood away from the surface of the skin, and uh, the skin looks more pale. Obviously, people are spending less time in the sun in the winter as well. So season, temperature, whether a person has a recent sunburn, whether a person had a good night's sleep last night. You can see it in their face if a person didn't sleep well last night. Their face has a, a kind of ruddy, rough uh, complexion uh, on their face. And then you know, okay, liver's a little aggravated. Um, their blood's a little imbalanced today. And I'm going to be very kind to the person because they might be irritable stress level can affect them, what they've recently eaten. All these things affect a person's face. And so, um, and so on the one hand, it's, it's really easy to start interpreting what you see on a person's face. And on another hand, in a way, you have to like know all of Ayurveda to enter into the, the complexity of it um, or the, the nuances of it. And none of those nuances are hard, but it's just what I'm saying here is that's something you're going to grow in all the time. And you're going to, you're going to start to see cause and effect, and you're going to know what's constitutional and what's something that they're going through in the last few days or something that's acute uh, conditions. So you're going to be on the lookout for that too. I wanted to just say that throughout this presentation, um, the claims that I'm making, some of them are observations confirmed by scientific analysis. Some of them are my personal clinical experience. Some of them are based on testimony from other um, uh, Ayurvedic practitioners and doctors. Uh, so I try to put this little character here, SP, when it's something speculative. 
when it's something that's just my own clinical experience. I think my own clinical experience is relevant, but we always want to stay humble, right? And then, and then, um, and then we can confirm it with other observations in the other parts of the body, and we can uh, feel even more confident as we as we go, right? So it's okay if um, if we're making guesses. This is another thing about Ayurvedic assessment. It's okay to guess. We don't have to uh, be a hundred percent sure. Why? because we're gonna confirm using other diagnostic tools and slowly get at the whole from part by part, okay? So first we're gonna take a look at um, Ayurvedic facial analysis uh, by face shape. Uh, here we see a Vata face. Typically a Vata face is a longer face. In general, Vata people have longer limbs, longer legs, and here I'm gonna speculate first off, I'm gonna start off right away. I speculate that the reason why Vata tends to have long features is due to the thinness and liquidity in their blood. Uh, the heart can easily pump the blood uh, in a Vata person because the blood is thinner and less thick than a Kapha person. And that, um, that additional circulation allows for longer limbed growth. Now that, again, you know, what, what is Western, Mes Western, Western medicine gonna say? They're gonna say it's all DNA, right? But the fact of the matter is, is you see short, stocky people and you see long and lean people, right? And that, that seems to be a pattern uh, that's not just uh, about DNA, but about, the, uh, but about uh, a whole body kind of pattern, all right? So in general, the more you can see the bones on a person's face, the more vata they are. Um, and, uh, and so vata faces are long and thin, and there may be asymmetry. This, uh, uh, in this photo here, very beautiful uh, uh, person, uh, has no irregularity um, in, in the face, uh, but often in Vata, there is some irregularity in the bone structure. Pitta is gonna have a little bit more of a heart-shaped face. Um, the, you see here, uh, and what I think typically of Pitta is that they're hot-headed, that they have lots of hot blood moving upward. And in my own, and I have a lot of pitta in my constitution. And if I get really like, get really going, thinking really hard um, this morning, uh, as I was sitting in bed, I woke up a little bit early this morning and I just was sitting in bed relaxing and I found myself uh, doing trigonome trigonometric proofs in my head, uh, you know, that I remember from uh, uh, doing my uh, math uh, concentration. Uh, uh, at university, and I was just trying to reprove, all, you know, some trigonometric theories in my head, and I was thinking to myself, you know what? <laughs> Instead of thinking of this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, move on to to something a little more useful. I got back to Ayurveda, and um, uh, and started redirecting my thoughts um, after a bit. But I could feel the blood pulsing in my head while I was thinking of that, and that's classic Pitta, right? That that uh, that they have a lot of upward moving heat and uh, in Ayurveda, uh, we see that uh, effect on the features here. And you can see in this person's face that the head is wider than the chin. Uh, so, uh, Pitta Kapha is a little, uh, can be a more rectangular face. Uh, and my face is a little more rectangular. Not to compare myself with Arnold Schwarzenegger here. Um, I don't have his muscles. But I do have a more rectangular face uh, than a heart-shaped face. Uh, like he does, and but typically that's more pitta kapha, uh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is a is a, is the like poster child for pitta kapha, M uh, strong bones, strong muscles, and uh, kind of like that Superman physique is uh, a pitta kapha constitution, and uh, and you can see here that it's that the face is finely chiseled, and you can see the chin bones there, but it's not due to thinness in vata. It's due to thinness uh, here. It's, uh, it's due to the prominence of the bone and musculature that the face looks finely uh, chiseled. <coughs> Excuse me. Kapha folks tend to have a more wider, rounder face. You'll notice in this face that the head is not really, the, the, the forehead is not really wider than the cheeks, as with the pitta face uh, two uh, slides back here. 
and that uh, kapha is the kapha is really good at self nourishment. They're really good at getting their tissues um, nourished. You know, they absorb a lot of nutrients from their food. So they're at risk for gaining weight. That's kapha folks at risk for getting gaining weight. Um, and they have generally thicker, more smoother, more oily skin. All right. Uh, oh, and I want to, maybe I should pause for just a second here for those on the call who aren't familiar with the three doshas in Ayurveda. Now that you've seen the, the three different kinds of faces, what you notice here is that vatas tend to be more thin, long, and lean. They tend towards deficiency. Uh, pitta people are hot. They tend towards heat. They're very metabolic. Vata's catabolic. Pitta is metabolic. And uh, and kapha is anabolic. Kapha is, uh, tends towards conditions of excess. So we have deficiency, heat, excess. is characterized as the three doshas. I promise I would make things simple. We can use those fancy words, vata, pitta, kapha, or we can use catabolic, metabolic, anabolic, or we can simply say uh, deficiency type, uh, a, a type towards excess and congestion and stagnation, uh, and then also the heat, pitta. Uh, so there you go. There's a modern English equivalent of these. Now, sometimes kapha, a face, is compared to a moon-like face. This person has a very kapha face. If I saw a client with this, I'd think this person is very kapha. Um, and what's the difference between this face and this one? This face has a little more heat in it, a little more color. So still vulnerable to kapha aggravation. You even see the, the uh, thickness of the skin above the eyes here. <coughs> Perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself. The bushiness of the eyebrows, nice thick hair. Then we look at this uh, kapha uh, person and we see that uh, the constitution is very cool, right? We see no, almost no signs of heat uh, in this. The lips are even a little pale. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Or uh, even on her neck, etc. So uh, when I see this, I think of a cool kapha. <laughs> All right, uh, kapha can sometimes have a uh, triangle face where the um, chin is wider than the forehead <clears throat> here, and. Um, so uh, in kapha, whereas in vata, uh, limbs are long and lean. In kapha, as you move away from the heart, body parts taper quickly. And again, I speculate this is because kapha has generally thick, sluggish blood that's hard to circulate. So uh, the limbs um, are, are a little shorter. Uh, for uh, the three different doshas, three different constitutions in Ayurveda, uh, where is the forehead? The lack of fat in a, in a vata forehead makes the skull seem like it's protruding. The uh, pitta has a likely larger, wider forehead. Kapha has a solid, heavy brow, indicating strong bones. And the bones of kapha are larger, more rounded, and blunt. And, but also their skin is thick, so uh, their features are more rounded because of the thick skin as well. Here you go. Vata cheeks, right? This is deficiency. This looks pathological to me. I mean, this person may have an eating disorder. <clears throat> In fact, I would guess that, uh, that this person has an eating disorder. I, if I saw, if I, if a client uh, came to me with such cheekbones like this, I would think, uh, and, and sunken uh, like this, I would think that there's um, a severe vata imbalance. And we see that <clears throat> the lips are uh, pale as well. Pitta, uh, we see here that this uh, looks more sharp. The features are more sharp. And um, <clears throat> uh, cheekbones are high. You see here in both of these photos, the cheekbones are high. This is the same person, <clears throat> different ages. And for kapha, the cheeks are, are full, more fleshy. <clears throat> Kapha in general holds onto water as also, which kind of fleshes out the face. It's very Kapha person here. Notice again, the cheeks are wider than the forehead. <clears throat> uh, 
Rata has a long chin. And the chin may be frail looking. Or the chin uh, may even look off center. That's not pictured in this photo. This is a three quarter profile. So that's why it looks off center. Uh, Pitta people tend to have a short and narrow chin as well, especially Pitta Vata. And again, we noticed this with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger before, the chiseled, wider, square chin is Pitta Kapha. <coughs> Rounded chin is Kapha. Okay, let's look at uh, some of the wrinkles and lines on the face. Um, and, uh, and hair. We'll look at features and we'll also look at hair. So uh, hair for a Vata person is frizzy and thin and dry. This one on the left looks like very dry hair. The one on the right more frizzy. Hair is typically darker in color for a Vata person, although genetics can play a factor. <clears throat> um, you can see even here her lips are dry and a little chapped. And you see this frizziness and dryness goes along with the Kapha face. Look at both of these faces are long, uh, lean faces. And you just start to see how all these signs start to match up. Pitta. Now, how do I know uh, that um, Prince William here is a Pitta person? Well, just look at the blood in the cheeks and in the nose and in the face, right? So right away, I know that uh, this uh, individual has hot rukta, hot red part of their blood. And the eyes have a kind of sharp look here. Uh, Pitta tends to have fine hair. Pitta men may bald earlier due to oiliness of the scalp and high, higher head temperature. <clears throat> Pitta hair is usually a little bit lighter in color. Kapha people have thick, rich, luxurious hair that's wavy, often dark brown. Oprah is a classic Kapha person. <clears throat> Vata people have thin, scanty facial hair. Pitta people, their facial hair may be fair or orange. People, Pitta people sometimes have red hair too. Not to say that any of the doshas can't have red hair, but uh, these are just tendencies. Okay? Pitta women may develop more facial hair as they age because testosterone increases. <clears throat> and Kapha has a thick, fast-growing, large beard. I mean, you know, my brother-in-law is Kapha, and he shaves in the morning, and by 5 p.m., he's got that 5 o'clock shadow, and it's thick. It's, a, it's more, almost more than a shadow for him. It's, an, it's actually impressive. And for me, I'm more Pitavata. I can go three or four days, and I start noticing that shadow, and then I shave, which is great. I hate shaving. I like to get right down to, I like to get to it. <laughs> so uh, facial lines. <clears throat> it's natural to develop facial lines on your face as you age. But a as you age, you have more and more vata. So wrinkles are associated with vata dosha. <clears throat> they develop as collagen is lost. And uh, they're typically located where lines develop. Um, excuse me. Uh, the, they develop in typical locations, but also the lines that develop on your face just reveal uh, your uh, habits and your facial expressions over your life, and therefore it reveals your emotions over your life, which therefore reveal your constitution. So where your wrinkles develop is uh, a sign of your constitution and your emotional well-being. <clears throat> uh, the location where lines develop, because it's an indication of your constitution, it's also an indication of uh, different imbalances in different organs. Vata faces look the most weathered due to dryness and the thinness of their skin, whereas Kapha types age well. They have smooth, supple skin that makes them look young for their age. Horizontal lines on the forehead indicate worry. Now, this is interesting. Again, I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to speculate on this. What do you notice about this person's skin? Is it thick or thin? It's thick, thick skin. 
So thick skin with worry lines, almost like kapha vata, right? That they have kapha type skin, but with vata worry lines. And I see this pattern a lot. When I see these forehead lines, it's usually not on <clears throat> the uh, vata only. It's more like a vata kapha person. And, um, and because of their kapha, they get overwhelmed really easy, easily. And, um, and they get these worry lines in their forehead. Uh, it's, uh, uh, at least that's what I notice. <clears throat> a vertical line next to the right eyebrow, which is the left side of this photo, is considered to be a sign that the liver is stressed. And a vertical line on the left side is considered to be the spleen in Ayurveda. But either way, uh, when you see lines like this, you know that a person um, is focusing their attention. This is Pitta, right? Pitta focuses in. Pitta um, wants to see things clearly. They uh, want to have a full analysis. <clears throat> and uh, I see someone in the chat here mentioned Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, Pitta. Pitta ka and he's got a little kapha too uh, in his skin. Uh, but Gordon Ramsay, that famous chef, uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's very Pitta. But he's all, he's all over. I mean, he's really high strung. You know, when I watch him uh, on, on TV, he's like, looks like he has a lot of vata too. I don't know how he, ha how he does it. <laughs> um, anyway, <clears throat> this person here, classic Pitta, direct gaze. <coughs> Excuse me, I have this tickle in my throat. <clears> throat> a direct gaze and, uh, and focusing in sharp gaze here. Maybe gets angry sometimes, maybe a little irritable. So, but you even see the clarity and the, and the, and the brightness of the eye that's typical for Pitta uh, with uh, good Tejas. <clears throat> All right, uh, double chin can be an underactive, uh, sign of underactive thyroid and slow metabolism, so that's more kapha. Again, this person has a very cold constitution. Their skin is pale. The lips are pale, uh, the, the metabolism is slow. So when I see this person, I know that they may have a tendency to be a little sluggish, right? And so I'm gonna have compassion for that. And I'm also gonna try to give them pep talks, you know? Try to get them going, uh, a little pep rally, stimulate them. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk with them in such a, in a, such a way that, uh, that they get a little energized. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Pitta. I have a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. Kapha people love Pitta people with enthusiasm because they want it. They dream of having enthusiasm, right? And, um, and so it's a good match. A Pitta person with a Kapha person or even a Vata person with a Kapha person can get that Kapha person motivated, which is, uh, which is good for them. And uh, so instead of fighting them or, uh, or not being, you know, compassionate towards their constitution, what you want to do is, you know, harness that, that sweet, loving nature of kapha and that stability of kapha. And then uh, you want to, you know, get, pump them up, give them a little enthusiasm, uh, light a little fire, get them, uh, get them enthusiastic, get them motivated. So that way you can both benefit off of one another. Um, <clears throat> what about skin color and complexion? Vata people, more dull gray skin. Lacking in luster. Now, I wouldn't say this person's skin is totally lacking in luster. The photograph is very gray. So it kind of gives an appearance of lacking in luster. <clears throat> but what I, why I included this photo here is the ruddiness and roughness and the rugged weathered look of their face. That's typical for uh, Vata. <clears throat> now, this person actually looks a little bit more like a Vata Pitta person. The, uh, it looks a little beat up. Yeah, he looks like he's gotten, you know, gotten down on, in the dumps a little bit. But uh, constitutionally, I still see that bit of that brightness in his eye. I still see a little bit of that redness in the forehead uh, and, uh, and the deep redness in the lips, actually. This person may have a deep-seated heat condition and pitta. And I wonder if their roughness, in this case, is coming from a deep-seated pitta that has ultimately aggravated their vata, right? That a person maybe. Um, because of their pitta, they self-isolated or made their life rougher uh, than it needed to be. And now they have a long-standing vata imbalance, right? That's the kind of, <clears throat> that's what we're going to 
try to do as an Ayurveda practitioner is peel back the layers a little bit. So uh, lots of people tend towards moles and liver spots. I remember when I went to um, Morocco, this is a great example of travel paranoia, right? I went to Morocco, was studying Arabic and Fez, and, um, and I saw a spot on my skin and I immediately thought it was skin cancer, which I would never really think that it is um, under normal circumstances, but because I was traveling, there's a certain kind of like um, fear or, or maybe it's just fear of the unknown or being in an unfamiliar place that can make a person, um, <clears throat> you know, a little bit paranoid. And I did, I thought that I um, was having skin cancer, but really it was just, a, it was a liver spot that was erupting because of my Vata imbalance traveling. And, uh, you know, traveling's hard on your body and my skin paid the price. And 20 years later, I still have that same little spot, which is a constant reminder of my trip to Morocco. <clears throat> my trip to Morocco was lovely, by the way. I have much better reminders than a liver spot from my trip to Morocco. <laughs> and I lived there for about four and a half months. It's a great time. <clears throat> All right, Pitta has very sensitive skin, probably the most sensitive skin. They tend to get rashes easily. Again, I'll use myself as a personal example. Um, before I studied Ayurveda, I was extremely allergic to poison ivy. And, uh, and then after uh, working with Ayurveda, I was really able to calm down my liver and now I can handle it, handle those things a little more. Um, so Pitta people have more sensitive skin. They might have a glowing and bright color to their skin because of their strong agni. Um, their skin flushes easily and may appear red. And they may blush easily. Sometimes Pitta people have a yellowish tint in their skin. And that's due to con a high concentration of bilirubin. Bilirubin is, uh, <clears throat> is uh, uh, there's biliverdin and bilirubin. Um, and they, they can give the skin a kind of sallow, greenish, yellowish uh, uh, tint. And you see sometimes people have yellow in their eyes or yellow in their teeth. Uh, that's due to the, that can be due to bilirubin. Uh, sometimes the teeth get yellow due to a high fever as a child. Uh, there are some other causes of that too. But in general, it is a uh, high concentration of bilirubin in the blood. So if I notice yellowness in the corner of my eyes, I'm like, oh, my pitta is pretty aggravated right now. That's stage two uh, pitta aggravation. <clears throat> All right, I'm skipping over some stuff just because we don't have time for everything here. Uh, kapha, thick skin, smooth skin due to the oily nature. This is a very kapha person here. Uh, the face is noticeably whiter. And you see here that she's uh, creating lots of contrast in her skin uh, uh, so that she doesn't look uh, more pale. That's what she's going for. Look at the hair is dyed. She's got the eyebrows colored, the eye uh, eyeliner blush beneath the eyes, uh, a darker lipstick. All of that is trying to, is her attempt to add a little bit of heat, heat signs and a little bit of, um, uh, to just balance out the look of kapha. Um, not that uh, a person needs to do that, that's just what this person's choosing to do. So, and you can see in the skin a slight pasty look if the fluids are stagnant. So I see a little bit of pastiness here and that makes me think, Oops, uh, that makes me think thick blood. It's a little stagnant, thick plasma, a little stagnant, a little hard to flow. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Vata eyebrows, thin and sparse. Pitta eyebrows um, have a sort of average thickness there. And kapha may have thick unibrow. Not all kapha people have a unibrow. I mean, that's a little bit, that's, a, that's uh, more, you know, more, even more. But you can see that this person has several signs of kapha. What are all the signs of kapha in this person's skin? Um, if, uh, if we had less people on the call, we could uh, talk back and forth. But he, here I see thick hair, thick eyebrows, um, uh, supple lips, all kapha signs. Some kapha people uh, have uh, this kind of short eyebrows. You see how the eyebrows are really short? It's not just that it's, it's not that it's sparse so much as short. 
The eyebrow, there's no eyebrow over here. That's a sign in Ayurveda of hypothyroidism or high uh, blood sugar. And again, you see the poofiness in the lips, karitaka, fullness in the cheeks. Uh, cheeks are wider than the forehead, all kapha signs. <clears throat> the shape of the eye also shows uh, constitution. And uh, let's see here. Oh, look at this, Vata. This is Vata Kapha face right here. Notice that there you get, you see the thick skin with the worry lines and good old A. You know, um, uh, he's classic Vata Kapha. Very tall, thick bones, um, and thin constitution. Vata Kapha. So uh, his eyes are very Vata, that smaller, deep set eye. Because why are the eyes uh, deep set? Because there's less fat buildup behind the eye. All right. Now, I want to point out two different kinds of baggy eyes here. I'm going to, before I zip through the rest of the eyes, because, uh, because I don't, I, we don't have time for all of them. But here's these two, both of these people have swelling beneath the eye, but very different types. On the left, we see Vata swollen eye, which is due to very poor sleep and adrenal fatigue. And you see the puffiness is very close to the lower lid. Now this, the bags are much deeper. This is fluid retention, right? This is like more, this is more kapha. So when I look at this, I think like, uh, you know, kidney, kidney issues, strong kidney issues. And then these little brown spots around the eyes, I'm speculating due to my clinical practice that this is kidney stress. When I see these brown spots around the eyes, I think of that as kidney stress. This is blood stagnation here. So no fluid accumulation, there's no puffiness, uh, but the blood is not circulating very well. So you're getting purple behind uh, the eyes. And, um, and in Ayurveda that's related to kidney. All right, you see here some uh, grayness in the sclera, that's vata. Um, there's a regularity in vata. Pitta, sharper eyes. There's the yellow eye, right? This is that kind of sparkling, bright, glowing eyes. That's fairy pitta eyes. And then big, beautiful, luxurious, kind of affectionate eyes, doe eyes. Uh, uh, that is kapha, large and oval shape. And thick lashes. Now this person has eyeliner on, so. Um, Eyelashes, you look even thicker, but thick eyelashes is, is kapha. All right, so kapha eyes will either be dark brown or more bluish in color. Then both of these folks are kapha. You see here more heat in this photo on the left. But look at the thick hair, thick, luxurious hair. And then on the right, Paula Dean, she doesn't have as much heat. She's not as sharp. You don't see the sharpness in her eyes. You see more like a, it's a little more bubbly. I don't know. This photo actually a little, looks a little more airy too. Um, sorry, Paul. All right. Ears. Vata ears may be more cool and bluish. Pitta, the ear will be red and warm to the touch. If I have, uh, if I have certain kinds of food, my ears will just turn red right away. Turmeric does that to me. Kapha people tend to have larger ears. The nose, Vata has a thin nose, uh, maybe a deviated septum. Pitta may have a red tip on their nose. And Kapha will have a broad, a more broad nose. Look at the lips here. Um, let's see here, what's going on with these lips? The lips really tell you about the blood, right? This person on the left has aggravated blood, aggravated rupta. Lips are a deep red color, and there's a rash even going around the lips. And then the one on the right looks totally anemic. Uh, as a person ages, their lips get thinner and also more pale. So that's Vata lips. Pitta people have red, 
uh, red, usually brighter, redder lips, not too thin, not too thick. This person has a lot of tension in their lips, so you can't see the fullness of their lips. This looks like a Pitacapa person. And look at these big, full lips on Marlon Brando here. That's Kappa lips. You know, this classic Pitacapa here, right? See that Superman physique, good, strong muscles. Uh, great kapha physique. Has the kapha, but with enough heat to turn that, some of that fat into muscle. All right, great. That is our presentation on face assessment. A brief overview and taking a look at how uh, to read the different faces. Again, vata being a deficiency, kapha being more excess and stagnation, and, um, and pitta being heat. And you see each dosha has so many assets and things that make that dosha beautiful. Vata's creativity um, and spontaneity is wonderful. Uh, Pitta's analytical problem solving, their accuracy, and also their enthusiasm and, um, and their drive and their ambition, all wonderful traits. Kapha people um, are nurturing and sweet and stable. Um, they know how to build a wonderful home. So that's all. Uh, really um, exciting, I think, to learn about the doshas. And uh, let me uh, stop the recording now and we'll take some questions. Thank you, everyone, for your interest in Ayurveda, uh, for your interest in, uh, in your body and healing, uh, for your interest in Joyful Belly. And if you like what you heard, uh, then consider taking our, our courses. You'll learn more about face assessment in the courses. And you'll also uh, get very rich uh, introduction uh, and uh, comprehensive um, instruction in Ayurveda. Thanks, everybody.